menu, Gothenburg in Sweden for round seven and eight of the Powerboat P1 World Championship. It's the second largest seaport of the Nordic countries, situated in southwest Sweden at the mouth of the Gothia River. The archipelago is also a vast area made up of thousands of islands stretching as far north as the Norwegian capital of Oslo. With around 20,000 sailboats and yachts scattered around the city, the powerboats are sure to make a splash. In San Benedetto del Tronto, Italy, the races were combined. And in the Supersport class, there was frantic activity at the start as they raced for prime position at the first turn mark. Problems developed early for the big Sergio, a disappointment when they were hoping for a good result at their home round. The chase for the lead turned into another close one, but Team SW1 Capital had to drop out of it after a spin damaged their props. Siegel shoulder and kept the rest of the boats at bay to win from Bayer Atalini and Eco Casa. And that was important for their hopes of the reigning champions winning this year's championship. Day two and a heavy storm in the morning saw the Adriatic Sea slightly rougher. Eco Casa were about to take the lead when unusually they hit a problem. Bayer Atalini took up the mantle as the storm closed in again in a dramatic finish and a perfect birthday present was given to Renato Guidi. With two events to go, Siegel Schuldren lead by Atalini, but the spirit of Belgium and Eco Casa are not out of the running yet. And it's an important weekend for the Supersport Championship, and it could just be a deciding one. Yes, this year it's a very tough uh, championship. We do have a lot of more boats that can win uh, the championship, and uh, we are in the first position, and uh, we are trying our best to keep it until the end. When Gothenburg was founded in 1621, Dutch planners based around canal cities like Amsterdam. However, it's clear the international shipping industry influenced its eclectic architecture. Scandinavia's largest amusement park is also in the city centre, attracting up to 3 million visitors a year. For Team SW1 Capital, Italy was disappointing and an expensive weekend to forget. We had a disastrous weekend, everything went wrong, drives, engines, so we thought that was it. Lying in bed on the Monday morning, think nothing else could go wrong, then we got a phone call, 10 o'clock in the morning, saying the truck was on fire in Modena. It is, yeah, fairly bad fire, but in the end, not as bad as we thought it could have been. It was a big blow and a big surprise for Ico Casa to have a problem with a boat that's been ultra-reliable. We were literally about to take fire. We'd, we'd sort of planned our attack. We'd nearly got him on one corner, and we were just discussing how the next corner we've got to get him, got to move into first place. And bang, yes, you can imagine the disappointment. There were nearly tears, but that's racing. There were big celebrations for the big Sergio after getting their first ever podium finish. We were uh, really working hard and waiting for this position, and. Uh, uh, the fee was a little bit rougher, which uh, suits uh, our, our boat, and uh, we managed to do the third position. After initial testing on Friday, the boats took to the Swedish waters for power pole to decide the lining up order for the race. And it was a strong run from Bayer Atalini, who set the fastest time, so can decide where they want to line up for the start, and this is going to be a help in getting a good start, as overtaking will be very difficult here, and Bayer are all too aware they have to win this weekend. I think that we, we have no chance. We have always to win to beat Angelo and to win the championship. So I'm uh, happy only if I win today. Siegel Schuldren were only a second and a half slower, so we have to look at them and SW1 Capital for the lead after the start. The Supersport class make their way out towards the starting point for the first race of the weekend, the sprint race, but without Ico Casa, who've broken a drive and are out. A tricky and narrow course, there's a start lap plus 10 full laps of the course. The start's going to be very important with the chances of overtaking minimal. And Martin Sanborn's your commentator. Thank you, Chris. The boats are lined up in the order of their power pole position as we get ready to start round number seven, the Supersport Sprint Race here in Gothenburg, Sweden. 
Looks like we actually have a patrol boat in the center of the course, a police boat. We have a green flag. The boats are underway off to an early start. The Spirit of Belgium in the center of your screen, but we have three boats converging on what looks like a patrol boat in the center of the course. Onboard via Atalini as Siegel, Shadra and the Spirit of Ukraine has to dodge inside of a boat on the middle of the course. Now the boats have sorted themselves out in the lead. SW1 Capital coming up hard on the inside via Atalini as they all make their way on the long run-up. We have 10 laps plus the start. Siegel Chandra goes to the outside, taking the wide line. SW1 Capital by Atalini trying to hold the inside line. By Atalini is going to have the inside. SW1 Capital right alongside as they make their way towards a very sharp turn at the end of this long run-up. Top three boats, Spirit of Belgium. SW1 Capital, Baia Atalini as Baia Atalini pulls ahead. Onboard Seagull, Chandran as Aaron Chantar is talking to Angelo Tedeschi as they pick their line. Baia Atalini noses just a little ahead of SW1 Capital. Onboard with Kim Collins and Daniel Cramphorn as they all set up for the first turn. First boat to the turn is Baia Atalini. They swing onto the outside. They push everybody a little bit wide. Siegel Shadron just barely touches the buoy as they go by, currently running in fourth position. SW1 Capital nosing up on Baia Atalini to challenge for the lead. They are neck and neck as they approach the start finish line as SW1 Capital just noses ahead of Baia Atalini. Two Donzi powerboats. One powered by Sterling and SWN Capital, the other by Mercury, as SWN Capital noses ahead of Baia Atalini and pulls into the lead, opening up a big margin as they head towards turn B. SWN Capital followed by Baia Atalini as our battle for third and fourth position heats up. The spirit of Ukraine, Siegel Chandran on the outside, on the inside, that is the spirit of Belgium. Mercury powered Nortec versus an Ilmore powered Chandran. As the Spirit of Belgium is benefiting from that great start they got, as we go on board, the current points leaders and the defending world champions, Seagull Chandran, Angelo Tedeschi, Aaron Chantar, and Victor Shemchuk in their Ilmore powered Chandran. As we go back to our leader, SW1 Capital, Arneson drives on this Donzi that is Sterling powered. They've had their share of problems this year. The boat very fast, but they've managed to have a few issues that kept them off the top of the podium consistently. But they're out in the lead here in Gothenburg, Sweden. Kim Collins and Daniel Cramphorn. Our local entry, the wild card. This is Happy Go Lucky with Paul Soli and Christian Fault. As we go back to our battle for third and fourth position. Oh, the Spirit of Belgium goes to the inside, almost misses the boy. They have to correct and go back to the outside as they're trying to run down Baia Atalini that is currently running in second place. Mercury-powered Nortec went to the inside, almost missed the boy. Early running in fifth position, the big Sergio, Mercury-powered with Alfredo Nunzo and Alfredo Amato. Back to our third place, both the Spirit of Belgium with Mika Rubin, Patrick Hubrix, and Mark Slusny. Baia Atalini continues to hold on to second position, but Spirit of Belgium dives to the inside, goes over the wake, and tries to make a move on the inside. That was over the shoulder of Baia Atalini as Spirit of Belgium was on the inside. On the outside is Baia Atalini as they make their way around lapped traffic, getting around Blue Shaft. Spirit of Belgium now moves into second place, powering by on the inside as Baia Atalini goes by Blue Shaft on the outside for third position. That was on board by Atalini is now the new second place boat, Spirit of Belgium. A Mercury powered Nortec as they drive by Baia Atalini. Baia Atalini just on the outside of their wake. Spirit of Belgium now has the advantage. They control the lane. They can push by a little wide if they want to, making it hard for them to get around. Spirit of Belgium. They do go a little deep. They push Baia Atalini wide as we see Siegel Chaudron coming around as they have to go wide because of Blue Shaft as they have now put them down a lap. 
but the Spirit of Belgium holds on to second position. On board the Ilmore powered Seagull Chaudron, the Spirit of Ukraine with Angela Tedeschi, Aaron Chantar, and Victor Shemchuk. You see Angelo Tedeschi pushing the throttles all the way forward. They are the current points leaders trying to get up in the heat. They want to be on the podium today, but they're currently running in fourth position right in the rooster tail of Baia Atolini. Aaron Chantar wiping the water off his hands makes the steering wheel slippery as he's getting hosed down behind Baia Atolini as they battle, trying to run him down and move into third position. Baia Atolini holding on to third as they watch the Mercury-powered Nortec of the Spirit of Belgium make their way around the turn. By Ottolini takes the inside line, tries to ride the inside of the wake. Seagull Schroedern goes even further to the inside as they ride right up the wake of By Ottolini. This is the view from SW1 Capital as they are on their final lap heading towards the checkered flag. SW1 Capital takes the win. Back to our battle for third and fourth position. On board Siegel, Shadra and the Spirit of Ukraine. They are trying to get by Baia Atolini. They're right at the rooster tail, but Baia Atolini is going to hold them off and capture third place. <laughs> but the win goes to SW1 Capital with Kim Collins and Daniel Cramphorn. Team SW1 Capital wins, Spirit of Belgium get their best ever finish. Afterwards, the jury ruled that Bayer Atalini and Siegel Schuldren would both be given points for third due to a problem at the start with a boat on the course. The first podium for the weekend for the Supersport Sprint Race and after such a traumatic time during and after the Italian Grand Prix of the Sea, this was very much a healing win for Dan Cramphorn and Kim Collins of SW1 Capital. It's, uh, it's a good feeling. There's a huge amount of work's gone into the last three weeks, uh, getting us all race ready again. And uh, it's a great reward. We, uh, it really made it all worthwhile. Uh, obviously, the more you put into something, the more you get out of it. So we certainly took a lot from today. Join us for more Powerboat P1 World Championship action from Gothenburg in Sweden after the break, when it's the turn of the Evolution Boats. Gothenburg in Sweden for the Powerboat P1 World Championship, where one of the area's most popular attractions is the picturesque archipelago, which can be reached by ferry boats. Now let's get back to this weekend's racing. The Evolution boats had pretty smooth waters to contend with again, and that meant high speeds and high stresses. The racing was close as always, with Cigarette Smash Boker and Snab OSG the early leaders. A spin for SNAV OSG did cause high heart rates, but no damage, and they continued, but came under pressure then from Metamarine Pagnolo 53. It was all becoming a battle of the Italians and a thrilling one to watch. But just then, the cigarettes were heading for an easy win. An incredible spin took them into retirement. That left SNAV OSG the leaders and victory for Giancarlo Canciano and Giovanni Carpitella. Second time out, Lucas Oil Outer Limits hit problems, and then so too did Cigarette Smash Poker, retiring for the second time. Fernibo and Meta Marine Pagnolo 53 put on a thrilling display as they raced it out for second place until the Meta Marine also hit problems. As the weather conditions changed for the worse, the finish line again was in sight for Snab OSG. Silver Line also hit problems but managed to get the boat to the finish line in third. The addition of reliability points for the first half of the season helped keep Silverline the Evolution leaders. If they stay reliable, it's going to be hard to catch them, but the others will be doing their very best to do just that. It's a matter of finishing um, is really important for us, so chasing the lead boats is not so much of a priority, although it would be good fun and it's nice to be in with a pack. Yes, for us it's a matter of finishing now. There was no doubt that Cigarette Smash Poker were the fastest boat in Italy, but two retirements and that scary spin was a disappointment. This time we were lucky. We could uh, handle the boat to, to the finish and uh, at least we took uh, 90 points, uh, otherwise it would be a real failure. 
Lucas Oil had a logistical nightmare to get apart from the USA in time for the first race, but after that, they too couldn't believe their bad luck in both races. We got going, it was running really good, but in the first lap, we hit something and tore a whole blade off of a pella. And so that's something, you know, you really can't uh, forecast. That's just pure bad luck, nothing you can plan for. That put us, you know, we ran the rest of the race on Saturday with a hell of a vibration uh, through the boat, and then that gave us some damage for Sunday's race. So, um, yeah, at the end of the day, we didn't come out anywhere near where we expected to come. Fernibo missed the first race when they damaged an engine and had to drive to Belgium for a new one. Second place was a reward in race two, but they still had problems, and it could have been a win. We are hoping to, for the first time, a first place. That's what we are hoping, but uh, not very sure about it. Uh, we have brand new propellers. We didn't test it. We did a lot of test work with the uh, engines, with the boats, other propellers, but this propeller just arrived uh, yesterday. So we hope this will be the excellent ones for us and hope the engines keep on running. This is a bird's eye view of the course. The rocks and islands in the centre of the picture are what the course goes through and around for the race and for power pole. There's very little margin for error. The Evolution power pole was hotly contested. Fernibo was piloted by Pierre Culpin and their reserve driver, Benjamin Van Riet, and they set the fastest time. We are more than happy and uh, we are more than pleased that everything was running more and more better and better. Only three Evolution boats recorded a time in the power pole, but it looked as if neither Snav OSG or Cigarette Smash Poker had an answer to the speed of Furnibo. The winners of Power Pole Furnibo get ready for the start of the Evolution Sprint Race. And it's the same course for the Evolution class. They'll race over a start lap plus 11 laps. Their lap times will be much quicker. And Martin Sambord is Oceanside. Thank you, Chris. As our Evolution boats get ready to take to the course in the Sprint Race here in Gothenburg, Sweden, they line up once again according to their Power Pole finish positions with the fastest boat on the inside, Team Furnibo. And we have a green flag and the boats are underway. Off to an early jump, Team Furnibo looks like they were on it maybe a little early. As you can see, Giancarlo Cangiano looked like he may have thought the same thing. He's in lane two in SNAV OSG. Right alongside him, Team Silverline, the current points leaders coming up hard in the middle is Lucas Oil Outer Limits. And cigarette smash poker on the outside as we go on board Furnibo. The view from the lead as they look back at the rest of the pack. Now moving into second place, Lucas Oil Outer Limits. So we have Furnibo, Lucas Oil Outer Limits, and Snav OSG with cigarette on the outside on board Silverline with Drew Langdon and Jan Bukowski. Lucas Oil Outer Limits is now pulling up and challenging Furnibo from the outside. Furnibo has the inside line as they make their way towards the first turn on this long straightaway. And Lucas Oil just edges ahead of Team Furnibo. Furnibo looks like they're slowing down just a little bit as they head to the turn. Lucas Oil on the outside. They move into the lead. Team Furnibo on the inside. Furnibo right at the rooster tail of Lucas Oil Outer Limits with Fiori and Scro. And Furnibo slows down. Furnibo slowing way down as they go through the turn. And they go to the inside. Lucas Oil Outer Limit swings wide to the outside in the lead. Team Furnibo pulls off. They are slowing way down. Coming to the inside, they've got a problem. That's going to put Snab OSG in second place, followed by Cranefields, Wine, and then Cigarette Smash Poker. As Cigarette Smash Poker goes across all of the wakes, trying to move to the inside. That's on board Snab OSG. Giancarlo Cangiano speaking to Hannes Bohink, telling him where he wants to go on the race courses. They are now in second place. We go back to Team Furnibo, and they have indeed had a problem. They are nearly off, playing to the inside, having just gone around turn M, the Stena curve. And their day is done before it even gets started as we go back to our battle for second place. Cranefields Wine on the outside is challenging Snab OSG, and they have now moved into second place. They're on the outside. Snab OSG goes across the wake and goes to the outside of the line chosen by Lucas Oil Outer Limits. But they push Cranefields Wine even wider. Cranefields goes right through the inside of the rooster tail of Snab OSG.
they went right through the rooster tail of SNAB OSG to the inside as we look at our leaders, Lucas Oil Outer Limits with Joe Scro and Mike Fiore. They have clean water as they are out in the lead. Second place, SNAB OSG. And they've opened up a big margin on Cranefield's wine after putting them through the rooster tail. Cranefield's wine goes way to the inside. What a great turn by Cranefield's wine as it made up a lot of ground on that turn trying to run down SNAB OSG. Neiman and Grieve as they make their way around the race course, but here's the battle for first and second place. SNAB OSG running right on the edge of the wake as they go across the wake right into the center of the line of Lucas Oil Outer Limits. Uh-oh, Cranefield's wine has a problem and they are coming off plane. Cranefield's wine comes off plane and comes to rest just before the start finish line. Mark Neiman talking about a potential mechanical problem, but look at this battle. Two outer limits, side by side, SNAB OSG, Lucas Oil, SNAB OSG, it noses ahead of Lucas Oil outer limits that take the lead. SNAB OSG on the outside, Lucas Oil outer limits on the inside. As we go on board with the new leaders, Conciano and Bohank, Cranefield's Wines Day is done, and that's going to move this boat into fourth position, Silverline, with Drew Langdon and Jan Fakowski. Sterling powered Silverline, they are the current championship points leaders. And they're now running in fourth position in the sprint race here in Gothenburg. But Cigarette Smash Poker has now reeled in. Lucas Oil Outer Limits. Lucas Oil Outer Limits running in second position. Cigarette Smash Poker on the outside running in third. Cigarette Smash Poker holds the outside line. That's Luca Fendi and Matteo Nicolini. As they are now trying to run down Mike Fiore and Joe Scro at Lucas Oil Outer Limits. They go wide to the outside. They're carrying boat speed. They're closing in. Cigarette Smash Poker on the outside. They are now pulling up alongside Lucas Oil Outer Limits. Cigarette Smash Poker now moves ahead. They go into second position as they drive by Lucas Oil Outer Limits. The Mercury-powered Cigarette Smash Poker with Luca Fendi and Matteo Nicolini is now in second position. But here is our leader, Snab OSG, Hannes Bohink, Giancarlo Cangiano. They are well out in the lead. They have all the clean water. A Mercury-powered Outer Limits in the lead. Back in fourth position, our points leader, Silverline with Jan Fakowski and Drew Langdon. A sterling powered Bootsy. They are currently in fourth position. Cigarette Smash Poker in second place. Luca Fendi and Matteo Nicolini. But they have a long way to go to catch Snab OSG and they're not gonna have enough time. Snab OSG is on their final lap and looking towards the checkered flag. Cigarette Smash Poker in second place. And Snab OSG just getting around Mark M. That is the Stena Curve, the sharp hairpin at the south end of the race course. And they are now looking at the start finish line, heading towards a checkered flag. That'll make it three wins in a row for this Mercury powered Outer Limits team, Snab OSG, with Hannes Bohink and Giancarlo Cangiano. The checkered flag is out as they head towards the start finish line here in Gothenburg, and they take the win in round number seven, the Evolution Sprint Race here in Gothenburg Sweep. The win goes to SNAB OSG. On board with your winners and a happy Giancarlo Canciano and Hannes Bohink. That makes it three wins from three races for SNAB OSG, with Cigarette Smash Poker finishing in second place and Lucas Oil third. Championship leaders Silverline are the only other finishers in fourth place to pick up points, and that's important for their championship. The podium for the Evolution class, and as well as battling for the win in each race, the teams are fighting for the overall placing for the weekend. But it's a good start again for Giancarlo Cangiano and Hannes Bohink. Now we are in the cockpit management much better, but uh, that needs a couple of time. And we are performing well, and the boat is fantastic. It's a very good boat. There's plenty more high-speed racing from the Powerboat P1 Championship still to come from Sweden after the break. The Powerboat P1 
Championship is in Gothenburg in Sweden for the first time. The Western Seaport remains an important shipping destination, but it's also becoming popular with tourists. And there's plenty to entertain this weekend, so let's get back to the action. Big news this weekend was a tie-up between P1 and Aspen, who are supplying a special green fuel for all the boats to use here in Sweden. It's part of a big target for powerboat P1 to be much greener in the future. We see it as a win-win situation. If, as if and the powerboat organization would like to push more to the green side, we see it as a good platform to spread the word in Sweden. All the tests carried out at Cosworth Engineering found that there was no problems with the engines using the fuel and no reduction in power. The spirit of Belgium are in their first year of competing in Powerboat P1 and getting a second place is the pinnacle of their season so far. It was the first uh, circuit that we really liked because our boat doesn't have the real speed. But we did something on the, the props this time for the acceleration and that was great. The Supersport boats head back out onto the course for their second race in Sweden, the Endurance Race. Because of the area the course is in, the course couldn't be extended, but there are more laps with a start plus 18. And Martin Sanborn will guide you again through the action. Thank you, Chris, and welcome to round number eight. This is the Endurance Race for Supersport. This will be the determining race to see who's going to be the champion of the Scandinavian Grand Prix of the Sea. The boats are lined up getting ready to head to their long first straightaway on lap number one where they'll make the big almost U-turn down at the south end of the race course as we look on board Big Sergio as they're trying to line themselves up for the start. And we have a green flag. The boats are underway. Off to an early jump, SW1 Capital. You can see them controlling the line behind them is Siegel Chaudron as they now go to the outside, go through the rooster tail of SW1 Capital as SW1 Capital makes their way towards the big sweeping U-turn, turn mark number M. Named the Stena Curve here in Sweden as they all make their way down, lined up, SW1 Capital in the lead by Ottolini coming up on the inside, but Siegel Schadron holding on to second place, Angelo Tedeschi and Aaron Chantar. They are in second position. On the outside in fourth position is Spirit of Belgium. But SW1 Capital continues to lead. And this is the view they've got. There is nothing like clean water for picking the best and fastest way around the race course. On the inside is Spirit of Ukraine, Seagull, Chadron. They've decided to hold on to the inside. Baya Atolini looks like they're going to try to move to the inside. SW1 Capital has the lead going into the first turn. Baya Atolini did go to the inside. They're now going to have to turn inside of SW1 Capital, which makes it even tighter on the spirit of Ukraine. Seagull Shadron as they go right through the rooster tail, have to cut back between Baya Atolini and SW1 Capital. But SW1 Capital has the clean water as they go through the second half of the Stena Curve. Heading their way towards the start-finish line, Baya Atolini is in second position. And because of that squeeze, they've opened up a big margin right now on Spirit of Ukraine, Seagull Chadron. On board with Angelo Tedeschi, Aaron Chantar, and Victor Shemchuk. Currently in fourth position, this is the Spirit of Belgium. Mika Robin, Patrick Hubrich, and Mark Slusny in a Mercury-powered Nortec. Second place in the sprint race, currently running in fourth place here in Endurance. In fifth position, Big Sergio, Alan Al with Alfredo Nunzo and Alfredo Amato. In seventh position, the other Alan Al entry, this is Blue Shaft, a Shipworks diesel-powered boat, the only diesel-powered boat on the course today. As we go back to the front of the pack, Seagull Chadron running in third position, trying to run down by Atolini. Aaron Chantar looks like he's choosing the exact same line as Baya Atolini running right in his wake. Blue Shaft is on the inside. They are about to get put down a lap by SW1 Capital. Collins and Cramphorn coming around in their Sterling Power Donzi. Arneson surface drives as they motor past. Blue Shaft Racing continuing to hold on to the lead. On board with SW1 Capital. As they make their way through the chicane, heading towards the big sweeping U-turn, 
at the south end of the race course. This is on board Big Sergio, currently running in fifth position. Oh, they have pulled back on the throttles. Big Sergio has a problem. The Mercury powered Allen. Al is out of the race, but SWN Capital continuing to lead up front. Collins and Cramphorn. Sterling powered Donzi out in front. Making a beautiful turn as we look at Big Sergio. And they are heading back into the pits. Their day is done. The Allen Al entry, Big Sergio having a problem and heading back to the pits. SWN Capital out in the lead. Clean water able to choose their line. Here in the endurance race in Gothenburg. Trying to get their first overall win of the season. SWN Capital with Collins and Cramphorn. Little bit of a porpoise as they're trying to get around some more lap traffic. This is our wild card entry. Happy go lucky with Paul Soley and Christian Falt from Norway. The only rib on the race course running as a wild card here in the endurance race in Gothenburg, Sweden. Coming around to the outside. This is the boat running in second position by Ottolini. Stefano Acanforo, Renato Quini, and Roy Capasso. They go to the inside line of Happy Go Lucky, trying to find clean water to see if they can run down the leaders. SW1 Capital. This kind of water conditions is where these teams all have to be careful to make sure they don't break out of their index. An 85 mile an hour index here in Supersport with a horsepower to weight ratio of four and a half kilos per horsepower. As we go back to our third place boat, the Spirit of Ukraine, the Ilmore powered Seagull Chaudhry. Angelo Tedeschi, Aaron Chantar, and Victor Shemchuk, they are currently running in third position. As Baya Atulini now trying to get around the lap traffic of Happy Go Lucky, our wild card entry. The Norwegian team of Paul Soli and Christian Fault. As Baya Atulini gets by. Still trying to run down SW1 Capital by Atolini in second position. As a little bit of rain starting to fall on this race course. As you see the distance that SW1 Capital has right now over by Atolini. SW1 Capital controlling the line back in third place. The Spirit of Ukraine, Seagull Chandra. They are our current points leaders in the championship. They are also the defending Super Sport champions from 2008. But Baya Ottolini continuing to try to run down SW1 Capital. As we go back to our leaders, SW1 Capital. Well out in the lead, choosing the clean water. Daniel Cramphorn and Kim Collins. This boat originally started its life as a pleasure boat, as you can tell by the rear seats. Converted over to a race configuration, a 38-foot Donzi. Sterling powered, 650 horsepower engines with harness and surface drives. This package has proven to be very reliable as we look aft. The spirit of Belgium on the outside has now gotten past the lap traffic of Blue Shaft, a Mercury-powered Nortec, and an FPT Iveco Shipworks. But running in fourth position, the spirit of Belgium Mika Robin, Patrick Hubricks, and Mark Slusny. Somewhat of a local town boat, the designer and builder of this boat from Scandinavia, Tron Shu, in this Nortec power boat. Yesterday was their best finish of the season. Still in third position, the Ilmore powered Seagull Chadron, the spirit of Ukraine with Angelo Tedeschi, Aaron Chantar, and Viktor Shemchuk. Running in third position, but still trying to run down Baya Atolini. They definitely want to hold on to where they are because they want to get on that podium here for the endurance race in Gothenburg. Oh, we have a problem right now with the Spirit of Belgium. They are off plane. The Spirit of Belgium had moved into fourth position and they are now off plane. Looks like their day is done as we go back to our leaders, SW1 Capital. Beautiful turn. 
around the Stena curve as they are on their final lap heading towards the checkered flag. SW1 Capital is going to take the win. That's two in a row, giving them the overall as well as the endurance race here in Gothenburg, Sweden. Kim Collins and Daniel Cramphorn take the win in round number eight, the endurance race. Coming in third place, the Ilmore powered Seagull shot from Spirit of Ukraine. Aaron Chantar, Angelo Tedeschi, Victor Shemchuk. As we watch the Spirit of Belgium come across, they will end up in fourth position. And there's the checkered flag going to the winner, Daniel Cramphorn and Kim Collins in SW1 Capital. It's a Scandinavian double for Team SW1 Capital. Bayer Attalini received a penalty for overspeeding, and that means Siegel Shoulder and finished second ahead of them. Team SW1 Capital do it again. That gives them their first ever double and first overall win over weekend. It's uh, more than we could ever ask for. It's um, what we've been hoping for the whole season. It's finally come off. Obviously, in Malta, we thought we had it. We got done for overspeeding. Fingers crossed we sort out the speeding issue. Here we are. Double win over the weekend. First overall. Yeah, couldn't have asked for any more. The points close right up. That means it's going to be a last round decider. The top three all have a chance to win, but realistically, it's between Siegel Shouldron and Bayer Attalini. More high speed entertainment from the Powerboat P1 World Championship from Gothenburg in Sweden coming up after the break. Sweden for the Powerboat P1 World Championship. Gothenburg is an important domestic sporting city and it's also hosted many major international events. These crowds have seen some amazing racing and there's more to come. Cranefield's wine were fast until a simple problem in race one brought them to a standstill. Boat was running really perfectly. I cannot say anything bad. It was really, really good. But uh, we lost the hose from the uh, fuel cooling system and uh, we had to decide to go out of the race. It looked like Fernabo were going to back up their power pole speed in the Evolution race until they too came to a stop. After three, four hundred meters, one engine up, restart, and we were with two on the first boy. But at that moment, was we blow it up. Lucas Oil were leading and looking strong until the fourth lap when they started to slow and then slipped to third. Yeah, we lost a pulley on an engine uh, and lost a belt and we started to lose boost pressure and uh, this lost a thousand RPM and we just kind of muddled along and kind of eked out our third place finish. Cigarette smash poker couldn't go as fast as they wanted to. The course is just not suited to them at all. The Evolution boats come out of the harbour at Gothenburg for the last time for the endurance race. It is the same course, but they'll be covering a race distance of a start lap plus 19 laps. And with all the boats ready to take up their starting positions, let's join Martin Sanborn. Thank you, Chris, and welcome to round number eight for Evolution. This is the endurance race, 19 laps plus the start lap. This is really going to be a test of the equipment. We have a green flag. The boats are underway. Snav OSG and Cranefield's Wine come together and close the door on Silverline. As Fernabo jumps out to the lead once more. This is on board Cranefield's Wine as you look at the battle between Lucas Oil and Fernabo. Fernabo has the inside line at about a boat length on Lucas Oil. Cranefield's in third position. Cigarette Smash Poker in fourth, fifth position is this boat, Snav OSG, with Giancarlo Cangiano and Hannes Bohink. The long three and a half mile run up to the big hairpin, turn number M. As we go back on board Cranefields again, Fernabo has about a half a boat length lead on Lucas Oil, but they have the inside line. We call it the Stena curve as we go on board Fernabo. They all make their way towards the big right-hand turn. Fernabo on the inside, Lucas Oil on the outside, almost side by side. These boats running about 113, 114 miles an hour as they make their way towards the big right-hander. Oh, cigarette smash poker blows by Cranefield's wine as we go on board our leaders, Fernabo, on the inside. And we watch them make the turn, hold the inside lane, and pick up some boat lengths on Lucas Oil. Lucas Oil in second, Snavo SG in third, comes on the inside and holds out Cigarette Smash Poker. 
Lucas Oil at her limits, crosses across the wake, looking for clean water. On the inside of Furtivo as they head towards the start finish line. On board Cranefield's wine, they've got a problem once more. This has not been a good event for Cranefield's wine. They had a problem yesterday, and once again, early in the race, they are off plane. As we look at our top four boats, Cigarette Smash Poker at the back, trying to run down Snav OSG. Cranefield's wine back in the engine compartment, seeing if they can figure out the problem and get themselves back underway. Lucas Oil in second position, trying to run down Furtivo as they go through the wake to the outside, then back across the wake again. Today it's Joe Scro and Nigel Hook. Snav OSG dives to the inside, keeps clean water the whole time. Giancarlo Gangiano giving some direction to Hannes Bohink. But Furnabo has the clean water. They are well out in the lead right now. Mercury powered mountain powerboat. Pierre Corpin and Frank Hemelar. Here's our current championship points leader. Running at the back of the pack, Team Silverline. John Fakowski and Drew Langdon currently running in fifth position. Fourth position, Cigarette Smash Poker, a Mercury-powered cigarette. Luca Fendi and Matteo Nicolini. But our leader, Furnabo. Perfect ride attitude on this boat. Same manufacturer as the boat that won the championship last year, but they've had a very challenging season. Uh oh, we have a red flag on the race course. Something has happened on the west end of the race course. Giancarlo Cangiano has slowed down. He's actually taking off his equipment. Oh, it's Lucas Oil. Lucas Oil has had an accident on the west end of the race course. You can see Joe Scro and Nigel Hook both on the canopy of the boat as it rolls over upside down. Good news that both of them are out of the boat and look like they're okay. They're both getting pulled into rescue boats. That's Nigel Hook getting pulled in on the left side of your screen. Let's take a look and see what happened. Lucas Oil trying to run down Vertibo as they go around the west end of the race course. This is turn A and B. Oh, and they spun the boat and rolled it over. The boat hooked, rolled to the outside. Looks like it almost pirouetted, landed on the right side. All the debris just tore the boat up in a huge spray. What a tough break for Lucas Oil, Outer Limits. Giancarlo getting out of the boat to see if there's anything he can do to help, but all of the rescue staff already in place. And we have a red flag on this race course. You go back, you see Joe Scro, Nigel Hook, both sliding off the canopy of the boat as it rolls over upside down. Glad to see that they are both okay here in Gothenburg, Sweden. Well, the boats have lined up for a restart. They are going to start the boats based on the positions they were in and the time intervals that they had at the time the red flag was thrown. The leader was Furtivo with a little over a minute and a half ahead of what is now the second place boat, Snav OSG. Furnabo gets the takeoff first. They head towards the big, long straightaway. They're going to start them in the exact same run-up that they had at the start of the race, a long three-and-a-half-mile run towards Marker M, which is the Stena Curve, a big U-turn at the south end of the race course. You can see the weather has changed dramatically since the sprint race. A little bit of rain on the race course. Furnabo has clean water, but that's what they had before the incident. You can see how sharp this turn is. Mark M1 just sets up the big U-turn, which is M2. Here's Snab OSG. They are currently running in second position now after the Lucas Oil incident. The Furnabo in first place, second place, Snab OSG. Third place is going to be Cigarette Smash Poker as we look at our leaders. The Mercury Powered Fountain. Here's our third place boat, Cigarette Smash Poker. Luca Fendi. Matteo Nicolini currently running in third position. Behind Snab OSG. But back to our leaders, Furnabo 2B1, Pierre Colpin and Frank Hemelar. A 42 fountain, Mercury powered. These guys are due. They've had a couple second place finishes, but looking for a top spot on the podium. Second place, Snab OSG. If they can hold on to that position, they'll take the top spot overall here in Sweden as we go back to now fourth place, Silverline. 
Jan Fakowski and Drew Langdon. The boat is way off the pace, but they made some changes coming into this race. They changed their gear ratios, changed propellers, trying to get some speed back in this boat. It's about 15 miles an hour off the pace of the leader, Team Fernabo. Fernabo 2v1 on their final lap as they approach the start finish line. They are going to take the checkered flag in their first win of the season. Pierre Copin and Frank Hemelar take first place in the endurance race here in Sweden. A dramatic race with that incident for Lucas Oil outer limits, but it ends with the first ever win for Fernabo. Snav OSG second, then Cigarette Smash Poker and Silverline. Great delight for Fernabo. Although Joe Scro and Nigel Hook were taken to hospital, they were perfectly okay. The first ever P1 race weekend in Sweden, and one that will be remembered by many for several different reasons, but all for great success for the event and for the crew of Fernabo. It was <laughs> terrific. It was really wonderful. We had a fantastic race. Uh... From the beginning till the end, it was great. We start, as you told, on Friday with a wonderful uh, time and uh, be on the right side today. It was uh, really unbelievable. The championship points for the Evolution class have Silverline continuing to lead with Snav OSG in second place and then it's Cigarette Smash Poker. For the Evolution class, it's all going to be at the last event too, which decides who will be the champions. And that will be on the Mediterranean waters around Sicily.